Hello everyone. So, so far we have discussed about namespaces which is a fairly complex concept for one to understand but now the one that we are going to discuss now is the C group or the control group concept which is fairly easy as compared to the namespaces. So namespaces decide what are the different kind of resources that we are going to use along with the container whereas the control groups decide you know how we can limit the consumption of those resources right so if you are so if you have a network or if you are using a device or if you are using a mem using the main memory so how do you limit the usage of these resources what cap do you associate with these resources so that you know the processes can limit their usage so this is governed through uh, control groups now there are different control groups these are the main ones so let's quickly go through each of those control groups the CPU control group. The CPU control group is a way to actually limit the usage of CPU across processes. So you can create two groups of CPU and you can say that you know 50% of the CPU allocate allocate to group one and CPU group two is going to get the remaining 50% CPU. But the point here is you know let's say there are two different processes 5007 and 7001 that have been assigned to C group 1 and there's a third process 6132 which has been assigned to C group 2 then 6132 gets the entire share of the 50% CPU that has been allocated for C group 2 as against the 25% of or, or rather 50% 50 50% of the 50% CPU that has been allocated to C group 1 so the process 5007 effectively gets 25% of the CPU and 7001 gets 25% of the CPU. If there was a third process in the C group one called, then each of them will end up getting around 17% of CPU. The next important concept is the memory. So here we can see that, you know, the memory has been divided into two groups the first group getting 55% memory and the second group getting 45% of the memory now since 6132 is the only process that is associated with the C group 2 it gets the entire 45% of the memory that that it's entitled to however however 5007 and 7001 depending on the way in which you have configured will get you know so let's say uh, 5007 has been allocated 40% of, uh, of the available 55% and 7001 has been allocated 60% of the available 55% memory then 7001 will effectively get 33% of the total CPU so total memory available on the system as against 22% of the process 5007 process with the bit 5007 next one is the IO, IO the control group. The IO control group is interesting because you know uh, it, you can restrict the read IO and the write IO using the IO control group. So you can say that you know you don't permit more than uh, transfer of one megabits per second to a particular device, or you don't read faster than two megabits per second of a particular drive. So all those things can be controlled using. IO CPU set CPU set is kind of you know works in conjunction to the CPU so if there's a uh, let's say there are there's a machine with only one CPU then then you know uh, there's not much that you can do but but if there are let's say four cores or four CPUs available on a particular machine then you can say that you know the 6132 process will always be on CPU 2 and 3 whereas 5007 and 7001 will always be on you know uh, CPUs 0 and 1 so that way you can restrict the number of uh, restrict the, the CPUs that, that a particular process will use and so that you know they don't they do not interfere with uh, each other's execution net CLS that's interesting so net CLS is the way in which you can actually uh, restrict the network traffic so this if there is a human amount of traffic out coming out of a particular container onto the docker bridge or the or the eth0 interface assuming that there's only one nic card then 
you can restrict the traffic uh, from uh, coming out of a particular container using the net cls uh, process with no cls control group devices devices is another interesting concept because you know you can decide what are the devices that you can connect to so you can say that container one will not be able to access the cd drive or associated with the with the machine whereas in a container two and three can access it so this is another thing that you can do freezer freezer is interesting because you know in freezer what you do is you can decide that you know uh, this process can go into a six stop that is halt state and then you can probably change the, uh, the session or the process group to which this particular process belongs so when you move from this process from one process group to another process group you can do that if this with the, with the freezer group uh, control group and then you can you know you can decide whether it's, you can do that possibly do that or not do that so whether this freezing is permitted or not this can be controlled through the freezer control group so that's in a nutshell about the different control groups now let's look at a small exercise to understand how do you actually do it in a regular machine and how can you do it on a on a uh, on a container so let's say uh, this is my machine so let me switch the user so I switch the user into this uh, into root now we go into the etc system D system folder and we create a test service so what I do is you know you copy test one dot service to uh, you know junk one dot service because you know this does not really mean anything right so junk one dot service and I call it uh, junk one junk one so I'll give it 1024 CPU shares so you do it by using something called CPU shares here and you are executing the DD executable here now I'll copy junk one dot service to junk two dot service oh sorry and in junk two dot service what I do is you have to see in the description because you know yeah let's make it uh, 3072 so what it essentially means that DD will get this particular DD application will get so this is again the DD application only but this particular application will get 75% of the CPU share as against the 1% uh, of the uh, junk one so uh, we will have to restart it so system ctl junk one dot And then we start junk to and then we do the top uh, yeah so you can see here so you can see that one process is getting 68.3 as against the so you know this exact it's getting closer to the 75 percent mark so this gets around 75 percent of the cpu as against the 25 percent of the first process so this is how you do it in a Linux machine actually but now uh, let's say if you were to do it in docker so you know that uh, though we have not discussed about this application in detail what happens when you pass the minus cpu minus minus cpu uh, uh, value shares value to a docker run command so you can say docker run minus itd minus minus cpu shares equal to 1024 right so what happens when you do this uh, type this particular command is uh, it asks the run c application to capture this information in the config.json so when you say run c spec on your machine 
so what happens it generates something called config.json and in config.json you can actually go and say that you know how you how do you want the cpu shares to happen so you see this there's a resources uh, thing available here so just below that you can go ahead and so i can go ahead and say that I'm going to use shares 1024 now okay so let me use a sudo here so let me go all the way down and then come up that'll be quicker and I can say that you know I'm going to use 1024 done now we can say sudo run c start okay so it says a container id is required to start and i can i'll say alpine i guess alpine is not there so is it busy box which is running here oops oops so Okay, I don't know. So, probably, you know, I'll have to do it as a super user. So, I come, at, come, to, come to this particular location. So it was running busy box, but it was not letting me run that as a, a root. So here, what you can see is you can come to the slash proc slash, or you can see groups. So it's a vi instead of vi. We have to do a cat. So it says okay. So it says fs group folder here and then the CPU and CPU shares it says 1024 so this is how you can control the the CPU shares associated with the particular container so you now you can do that do it at the container also when you pass these parameters as part of the docker command it takes this and tells run c that while you're generating config.json please take care of this constraint and it does that hope you understood this concept thank you for listening